Hey, what's going on everybody? Jamie McDonald here. And I figure after such a long hiatus from making any sort of tutorials or walkthroughs, I should jump back right into the mix with the Nick software suite of tools. Um, the reason I want to go over this is because I've been getting a lot of positive feedback on some of the images I've been creating using the Nick suite lately. And um, I just wanted to show how combining multiple different uh, parts of the package can give pretty impressive results. And I have some images shot in these abandoned train cars that I had uh, taken some time to visit not too long ago and I thought that they would work well for subject material for this walkthrough. So what we have here is the scene of an interior of one of these abandoned train cars. They're located not uh, too far from my house and I live in a small town, kind of a rural community. And it's funny to see these two abandoned train cars about a half mile off, off of a country road, basically, um, on an abandoned section of train tracks. I've been looking and eyeing at these cars for uh, a couple of years now, and finally I just couldn't take it anymore. And on a Sunday afternoon, I decided that's it. I'm going to go out and photograph these cars. So I put the call out on Facebook asking if anybody wanted to tag along, and Luckily for me, a buddy of mine decided he wanted to swing out and check them out too. So we did the hike and got some pretty cool photos from these cars. And I've chosen this interior shot uh, to be the one that I'm going to work with today. It is uh, the interior of this train car, um, cluttered with all kinds of debris, and it is dark. This is the, uh, the base exposure, and I'm saying base exposure now because what we're going to go over is a, uh, a bracketed HDR. So what that means is um, I'm going to take a series of photos with my camera and I have the camera set up so that each photograph taken is at a different exposure value. So this right here would be an exposure value of zero or a base exposure. Um, it's just kind of set up using uh, center weighted metering and I metered off of these stools right here because they were kind of Oh, I don't know, let's say like a mid-tone as far as light is concerned. Um, in the foreground up here to the right, we've got a lot of light in the top right up here. And in the back of the train car, it is just pure black. So something in the middle kind of gave me kind of an in-between as far as exposure goes. So I, uh, I metered off of that and figured out where I wanted to have my exposure set for like my base uh, exposure for my initial shot. And in my camera, I set it up so that it would take three photos sequentially, each one at uh, an exposure value of plus or minus three from the base exposure. So what we'll end up with, base exposure, and we've got negative three stops, which is crazy dark. But the reason it's crazy dark is because what we're going to do is it gives us any kind of detail that might have been lost in highlights, which... In this scene, we didn't really lose a whole lot in highlights, maybe some uh, detail information through uh, the windows right here, but not a whole lot. Um, but where it really shines with the HDR and the bracketed shots is what you'll see this next shot is at a plus three exposure value. Right now, the base uh, exposure, the back of the train car, you see nothing at all. It's just pitch black emptiness. This is at positive three exposure value. And there is a ton of detail in the very back of the car. Um, stuff, stuff I couldn't even see with my own eyes. So um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take all three of these images. We're going to select them. Um, you can't see my library right now in Lightroom. It's off on a secondary display. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my lowest exposure. And I'm holding down Command and I'm selecting the next exposure which is my base exposure and then I'm selecting the high end exposure which is the uh, positive three exposure value. I've got all three of those selected and I'm going to go up here to file, export with preset and choose HDR effects pro 2. So once I start the export process um, there's something that I'll make note of right here. Um, I was shooting with a manual focus lens the Rokinon 7.5 millimeter fisheye and this lens has no, um, there's no electronics on board on this lens. So it does not communicate with the camera at all. Um, it's all manual focus. And because of that, um, HDR Effects Pro 2 is going to be missing some information from the EXIF data on that file, which means it doesn't know 
what exposure value each one of these shots is taken at. And that's indicated up here in the upper right. We've got this little warning and it tells you it's missing exposure data. Well, I know what my camera's set up to do. Um, so this darkest exposure, again, is going to be minus 3. Back up here. There we go. Good grief. Minus 3. Our middle exposure value is 0, which is correct. And on the bright side is plus 3. So now that I've got those all set, I could go ahead and cre uh, hit create HDR. But I'll go over a couple of the things that you see uh, options for on the right hand side here, okay? So the top one is alignment. And what alignment is, is if you were shooting this or trying to shoot this handheld, which I don't really recommend in most cases for bracketed shots. Um, if you're trying it handheld, you might be a little unsteady and there might be a little bit of shift from one shot to the next. By ticking the alignment box right here, what happens is, is it's gonna analyze each one of the the images and it'll find some defining characteristics that are really strong edged um, you know like these poles right here or the edge of this ductwork or whatever and it'll take those edges and it'll try to align them from one image to the next to try to take care of any uh, shift that there may have been from you moving the next one is ghost reduction no it has nothing to do with like the supernatural uh, ghosting would occur if you had let's say a subject in the frame that moved a little bit. Um, let's say I had the buddy of mine that was there shooting with me that day standing up in front there and I was gonna make like a crazy cool uh, portrait shot of him. But because I'm doing three different exposures at different uh, lengths of time, he may shift a little bit from one exposure to the next. And the ghosting kind of does what the alignment would do, except it does it with uh, something in your scene that's moving rather than you moving the camera. Um, we've got strength down here, and that's just how um, how much. Uh, I don't. Let's, I'm not going to use a technical term here because I don't know the right one for this. But we'll just say how crispy your HDR turns out, uh, how extreme it's going to look. I keep it at 100% because it's going to give me the most detail from everything. Uh, lastly, is chromatic aberration. Uh, chromatic aberration is something that you'll see generally in scenes where you've got a lot of bright light. Um, especially around things like chrome or um, white where it meets another color. Uh, you get these like purple or cyan color uh, banding that occurs along the length of the white areas. Um, normally that is a problem with like a fisheye lens or this lens if I was shooting like in really bright sunlight, but the scene is dark, so I don't need to worry about chromatic aberration. I don't need to worry about alignment up here at the top because I was on a tripod the way you should be for a shot like this and there's nothing in my scene that would have moved so I don't need to have the ghosting turned on. So here we go. We'll create the HDR. Depending on the speed of your computer it might take a minute uh, depending on the file size of the images too. Uh, working on a newer computer here so it kind of zips along pretty good. So here we are uh, with our newly generated HDR image and right over here on the left hand side you've got these um, they're presets basically. They're uh, ones that Nick has put together and a lot of them honestly are pretty cool right out of the gate. Uh, I generally use these as the starting point for any of my uh, completed projects. So um, what I the look I want to go with with this image I think is going to be kind of a um, I want it to be dark but I want it to be kind of like this retro look to it. Um, I don't know how to explain it. I've kind of got this vision in my head. I just want it to be something like, uh, you know, 25, 30 years ago, somebody stumbled upon this, you know, and decided to shoot it uh, with a film camera, you know, pre-digital age. So I'll start off with one of the presets. Um, again, kind of hard to see in these little thumbnail views, but I've used these enough to where I kind of know what they turn out looking like. Um, I'm going to start off with this preset here called Structurized One. Um, the emphasis on structure being uh, over here on the right hand side you've got this structure slider and it's going to be just how much um, how much detail stands out in all your uh, scene here first off um, you know everything here is going to be based on my personal opinion on how I want my image to look all of these things are just uh, guidelines you can just kind of go from here with what you want to do but I'll tell you this safety orange stuff is driving me crazy I'm not a big fan of that it's just kind of weird in the scene so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna selectively tone those down uh, one of the cool things with the Nick software is you've got what are called control points 
uh, right over here you can see the control point I'll click on that and I'll bring it over and I will click on it now what happens when I add a control point uh, anything that is underneath this little picker of the control point any color that's underneath that is what is going to be directly affected so I've got it over the orange so what's going to be directly affected underneath this little circle of influence I've got right here is going to be stuff that's orange like this or very close to this orange so I'm going to take the saturation down on this a little bit because I don't want that kind of um, I don't want it to be a draw to the eye and as nasty as that orange was I think it was so um, command D or control D will duplicate this control point that I've just created so I'm going to take and move it and grab this other color orange here and maybe tone that down just a little bit more and I'll duplicate it again and I'm just gonna kinda run around the scene here and just selectively adjust that orange to where it's not so um, gross <laughs> for lack of a, a better way of putting it and again just not a, a color that I really care for okay so I've de-emphasized those a little bit and now I'm gonna go through and do a little bit more adjusting to this image um, I like a contrasty image and this default preset was a little low on the contrast we've got it down here in the negative 8% range I'm gonna crank it up a little bit I think 20% is good I'm gonna darken it up just a little bit I don't want to lose everything that's in the back I want to keep just a little bit of detail in there so you can see that there's something going on back there it's kind of a it's a mystery we don't know exactly what's going on back there um, kind of digging it I'm gonna drop down the exposure just a fuzz and I'll throw like a lens vignette on this there we go alright kinda cool again we're not done yet because the whole plan here was to work within a couple of different pieces of the Nick suite so here we are with the first part of it done uh, working in HDR effects we were able to pull out a lot of detail back here just enough to kind of add to the scene more so than we would have definitely had in our base uh, exposure which had most of this back here is just completely blacked out so I'll save it out and when it's done saving it's gonna dump us right back into Lightroom and from Lightroom we can export out again into the next part of the Nick suite uh, something else to note too when you're exporting out of Lightroom to do your bracketed HDR um, Nick does not recognize your camera's uh, native raw format so what it does is it's going to export out those images as TIFFs uh, I hate notifications while I'm trying to do this stuff let me turn my phone off here so uh, what happens is is it uses a TIFF file TIFF is going to be about the next best thing that it can work with um, it's a a high bit format that has tons of detail and tons of uh, image information in it to work with pretty darn close to raw so you'll notice when you go to export from Lightroom into HDRFX Pro it'll say that it's exporting out a copy as a TIFF so I just thought I might point that out to you okay so here's our modified image now from here we're gonna develop or edit it in um, I think we're going to use the uh, analog effects because, I, like I said, I kind of wanted to go for that older feel to it. Um, so you just go to Photo, Edit In, and here's Analog Effects Pro too. Um, Silver Effects Pro is how I like to do all my black and whites. I could have went a totally different direction with this, but like I said, I have a look in my head that I want to use. Um, again, it's going to export it out as a TIFF. We could do it at, as, a, um, as a Photoshop native file which works great because you still have a ton of detail in it I don't ever export out to work in one of these apps as a JPEG because you just lose so much information in your image that you end up with like really muddy pictures so let's uh, keep it as a TIFF file and we're gonna edit it um, I can edit the original uh, if you had done any adjustments in between HDR effects and analog effects in Lightroom then you would obviously edit a copy with your Lightroom adjustments applied so I'm just gonna edit the original here and analog effects pro fire up alright so here we are in analog effects and <laughs> it's funny it's preset to 
kind of the look I was going to go for, but I'll recreate this myself. So over here in the upper left, we've got some uh, different faux camera effects that you can work with. Um, we got what they call classic camera, wet plate, which I guess if you want to go back to the uh, late 1800s, uh, toy camera, which is kind of cool. You know, you can get like a really Holga look to it. Um, you can see you've got the the blurring that you might get from a plastic lens or whatever over here. Um, I seem to spend a lot of time like either in the vintage camera or the classic camera presets. So we'll go to the classic camera. And this is kind of the starting point that I was going to use, but I had already kind of run through this image a little bit earlier. So that's kind of the preset that you saw right there were the settings that I had used before. But I'll show you how I got to those. Um, okay, so again, most of the presets I just consider like a like a starting point for what I'm going to do. Uh, every once in a while I might just start from scratch and just create my own right from the get-go. But in all honesty, the presets that come bundled in are really cool and lots of times just some tweaking for individuality works out really well. Uh, just like in HDR FX Pro 2, you've got your preset window on the left. And on the right hand side, we've got all the individual settings that we can start tweaking and adjusting here. So uh, we've got a light leak on the left hand side of this image you can see over here. And that's not the light leak look that I'm going for. Um, Actually, this is the one that I kind of wanted to work with earlier. Um, you'll see down here uh, in the lower right hand side, we've got this little crosshair. You watch as I drag it, it changes the way that the light enters your, uh, your frame here. So again, just by playing with this, you can take what the, uh, the canned preset was and just kind of make it your own. So I had this over here earlier because that was the look that I dug. So I've got my light leak added, um, change my film type. I want more of a, uh, a warmer look to the scene. Maybe not quite that warm. I kind of dig that. Um, you could add frames and borders around it. You know, again, a lot of, it, a lot of this is just, you know, it's subjective. It comes down to your own personal tastes. Um, some people don't like the border, some do. We can go back to our basic adjustments. Um, we'll darken this up just a little bit. And there you go. I mean, that's kind of how I might like it. So we'll save this out. And again, it's going to dump us straight back into Lightroom. And from Lightroom, we can do whatever we're going to do, export it out to... Uh, any of the different social media channels that you might use, uh, Flickr, Facebook, 500 Pics, Google Plus, or just sit on it and don't share it with anybody and just kind of hoard it all to yourself. So there you have it, you guys. Um, this is just a quick little walkthrough of exporting out from Lightroom into various uh, working modules of the Nick Software Suite. If you've got any questions, feel free to add them down to the comments below. If you want, uh, longer tutorials, shorter tutorials, more detailed, less detailed. Just give me feedback. I'm totally open to suggestions. Uh, if there's anything specific that you want, like if you've seen something online and you thought, man, it'd be cool to know how to do that, um, just shoot me a message, leave it in the comments, and there's a good chance I could figure out how to do it if it's something that I don't already know how to do, and I'll be glad to put together a tutorial for you guys. So there it is. Uh, the Nick Software Suite, HDRFX Pro 2, and Analog Effects. Take care. Bye.